Don't forget to subscribe TechWast Vlog and also tap the bell icon to never miss a video from us. In this video, we are going to demonstrate how to install and configure DSCP on Windows Server 2008 R2. We will also talk about some of the features available with DSCP and how exactly DSCP works. Once again, friends, my name is Nitin Lal and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel TechWast Vlogger. If you are new to my YouTube channel, then consider subscribing. Alright, let's begin. Welcome back friends, before installing DSCP on actual Windows Server 2008 R2, let's quickly understand what exactly DSCP is and how exactly DSCP works. Now if we talk about DSCP, DSCP is a client server protocol that automatically provides an IP address to the host and also other related configuration information such as subnet mask and default gateway. Now if we talk about larger environments where you have thousands of machines in your infrastructure, it's really tough for the admins to assign the IP address manually by going into the each workstation and you know chipping the IP address. Now if you have DSCP solution that actually saves hell lot of time for the admins and there is no manual intervention required. Everything is automatic and uh, there is no need to go to the workstation and assign the IP addresses. Now let's quickly understand how exactly DSCP works. So on my right you can see there is one client machine and on my left you can see there is a DSCP server. Now how this process works let's quickly understand. So client actually broadcasts the DSCP request into the environment. Uh, DSCP server actually receives that broadcast request and say hey I'm here to give you the IP address and it offers the IP address to the client machine. Now once again as soon as client knows that yeah there is a DSCP server available then client again asks for the IP address and it sends the request for the IP. Now as soon as server receives the request it acknowledges that request and issue a release IP address to the client machine. Now there are some other options as well available within the DSCP which we are going to talk about when we install DSCP on this uh, 2008 server. So uh, let me give you a brief about what all options are available. Like for instance we have one option available called exclude some IPs. So there is an option whereas uh, you would like to exclude few IP addresses uh, to assign to the client machines. Let's say for instance you have uh, 10 or 15 uh, servers uh, in your environment and for those servers you would like to have uh, uh, a IP range called 10.1.1.1 to 10.1.1.15 excluded. So you can simply go ahead and ex exclude that within the DSCP server. There is another option available called reservation. So if you have a MAC address you would like one machine XYZ machine to have same IP address every time when that user logs in. So you can simply go ahead and uh, you know reserve that particular machine uh, by using the MAC address onto the DSCP server and uh, every time when that machine boots up they will only get that IP address. Uh, there will not be any lease. They will always get the same IP address on their machines. So we'll talk about it once we install DSCP server on this machine. So let's quickly uh, get into it and install DSCP on our Windows Server 2008 machine. Let's begin the installation of DSCP on Windows Server 2008 R2. Let's open our Windows Server 2008 machine. If you want to know how to install Windows Server 2008 R2, you can click on the link reflecting on your screen right now. Now click on Server Manager. Click on Add Roles. Click Next. Select DSCP server. Click next again. Now as soon as you click next, let's talk about how exactly DSCP works and it will give you the brief about DSCP. Once you read that, then click next. I have just one network adapter assigned on this machine, so that is reflecting on my screen right now. So I'm gonna click next again. Now on this screen you need to specify the DNS server settings. So that's my domain name that is absolutely fine. Now uh, this machine of mine is acting as a DNS server as well. So as you can see here it's showing the IP as a loopback IP address here which is not going to work uh, if we assign the same IP address to the client machines as well. It will try to find the DNS server locally on the same machine. So I'm sure you get the IP address of your DNS machine. So in my case, I have 192.168.2.2. So I'm going to give it here. 
and click validate. So as you can see, it's validated the uh, DNS server. I'm going to hit next. Now in these days, uh, I haven't seen wins on any of the environment. In case if you have wins in your environment, then you can simply go ahead and uh, supply the IP address of the win server here. Uh, in my case, I don't have it, so I'm going to hit next. Now here you can simply go ahead and create the DSCP scopes. So I'm going to create a new scope here. So I'm going to give it a name as uh, uh, my Citrix scope. Yeah, I'm going to use the scope uh, with my uh, previous servers later on. So that's why I'm giving it a name as uh, my Citrix scope. And uh, I'm going to give it a range as 192.168.2.1. And I'm going to give an ending range as uh, 192.168.2.254. As you can see, that it's picked up the uh, subject mask automatically. So I'm going to click OK here. I'm going to click Next. And I'm going to use uh, DSCP version 6 for this video, so I'm going to disable it. As you can see, that uh, it's, uh, it's just the uh, user ID to authorize the DSCP server. So I'm going to click next again and then install. As you can see on my screen that DSCP server has been installed and this machine is acting as a DSCP server now. So I'm going to click close, close this and restart my machine. So this restart is going to take a bit of time so I'm going to pause this video for now. As soon as my machine gets rebooted I'm going to be back. And we are back. As you can see that my machine has been booted up. Let's open DSCP on this machine. Go to administrative tools, DSCP. Expand IP version 4. That's the scope which I have defined during the installation. So just right click on it, go to properties. If you would like to change the name of your scope, you can do it here. So let's change it to uh, Citrix scope. That's my start IP range, that's my end IP range. That's the default lease time frames, which is uh, there as 8 days for now. So I'm going to stick to the defaults, if, but if you would like to change it, you can do that here as well. I'm going to click apply to those changes. Now go to address pool here. Under address pool, you can see my start IP range and end IP range. Now, let's say for instance, if you would like to exclude some IP addresses, which we talked about earlier as well. So you can do it here. So simply right click. Either you can right click here or you can right click here as well. Right click, click on new exclusion range. So I want to exclude the IP from 192.168.2.1 and let's apply the end range to 192.168.2.20. So these IP will not get assigned to any of the machines uh, who is going to request IP from the DSCP server. So this IP will get excluded. So um, in some scenarios, let's say for instance, if you don't have exclusion in place, you have a static IP address assigned to some of your servers. That could be a Citrix server, application server, exchange server, whatever it would be. So if you have one static IP there and you haven't set up any exclusions, there could be a possibility that you might see IP conflict within your environment because the SCP server doesn't know what IP needs to be excluded. So it's going to assign that IP address as well, which is assigned as a static IP address to one of your server. So it's good to include those server servers within the exclusion list here under the DSCP so that uh, those IP will not get assigned to any of the client requesting IP from the DSCP server. So simply click add. Close. Now, as you can see that my exclusion is included here. So this IP will not be available for distribution. Now, go to the lease. As you can see here, one of the machine has requested an IP address from, uh, from this uh, DSCP server. So that's the name of that machine, uh, Zen Desktop. That's the name of my machine, which uh, uh, requested an IP address around uh, 118 around 15 to 20 minutes ago so now if we go to this machine and type 
ipconfig, which I have already done. Let's zoom it a bit so you all can see. Now here you can see that uh, it's showing the IP address of the DSCP server. It's showing the IP address of my DNS server. In my case, I have DSCP and DNS uh, installed on the same machine. So that's the server which is serving the IP to this machine as of now. And for the, if we go further up, That's the IP address uh, of that machine. See. Now, if we go back to our DSCP server, that's the IP address which we just saw on this machine of mine. Now, as I said earlier as well, we have an option under the DSCP server where we can simply go ahead and uh, reserve few IP addresses for that particular server or a client machine. So, if you include the reservation here then there is no lease process as such so that particular machine whenever it booted up uh, it will always get the same IP address if you set up the reservation but there is one or two conditions which you need to follow if you would like to set up a reservation let's say for instance I would like to set up this machine uh, under this uh, new reservation so to do that I'm going to give it a name uh, Zen Dexter. But this way, it would be easier for me to identify that this particular reservation is assigned to this machine. Now, I'm going to give the IP of that machine. So, there is one condition, as I said, as well, against the MAC address only, you can uh, set up the reservation. So, let's get the MAC address of this machine quickly. Go to settings, go to network adapters, advanced, and pick the MAC address from here. Go back supply the MAC address, remove those columns, and click add. Now here you can see I have this particular machine set up for reservation. Now these are the scope options which you can define as per your request, again this particular scope. Now there yeah, are certain options available like for instance you have any router you can supply it here you have additional uh, you have your time server NTP server you can supply that information here as well if you have any additional DSCP server sorry DNS server you can uh, chip in that information as well so based on your requirement you can set up these scope options uh, within your infrastructure that's all I have for now. Thanks for joining me for this course. I will see you in the very next tutorial of mine. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, then please subscribe. Until then, I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.